An ice storm is about to pick up over parts of the nation's midsection, and it's going to bring some pretty decent ice accumulation from Oklahoma all the way on up into the Midwest with flooding rains on the southern end. Got the details on the ice storm timing, those flooding rains, and a look at the warm-up on the horizon coming up. All right, you're taking a look at the pressure pattern here out of the European ensembles. You can see here we've got a pretty big Arctic high over parts of the south and eastern part of the United States as we go through the rest of this weekend there at 1041 millibar high pressure system. That is very high pressure, indicating clear skies and very cold conditions over that part of the country. But we're shifting our focus away from those wind chills because we've only got a couple more days of those, and I've been talking about those the last several videos. Looking at those blues on the west coast, that indicates lower pressure, and you can see how that's going to start to push up against the high pressure to the east eventually here we start to see you know the low pressure kind of encroach on the plains here which is why we're going to have this zone I'm circling really start to fill in with some activity as we make our way through this week and it's going to be really active especially over the south central plains by the way if you enjoy the rest of this video please consider hitting that subscribe button now let's get right into the overview here using the HRRR models winter radar here we go you can see as I'm filming this on your Saturday afternoon evening time frame still got some lake effect snow bands there off Lake Michigan on um, Lake Erie as well as parts of Lake Ontario. Good for some additional accumulations there, but main focus is on the system that's impacting parts of the west with an atmospheric river-like setup there in parts of northwest California. Western Oregon as well. You can see snow and ice really filling on in there through the overnight hours of our Saturday going into our Sunday. Um, all the way from eastern um, Washington there in northeastern parts of Oregon where we have the ice and snow potential down here over parts of the rest of the southwest. You can see we've got pretty good rain and snow chances, of course, the snow with the elevation, and maybe some flooding there into parts of western California as that heavy rain slams into the northwestern shores especially. You can see, though, as we make our way through the afternoon hours here of our Sunday, we're going to start to see a little bit of low-level moisture get pumped up as a low tries to form here somewhere just east of the four corners. That's why we've got the wraparound snow there in parts of southwestern Colorado, but this is going to bring a southerly flow up into parts of the plains, um, initiating some ice maybe over parts of northern Texas, southern Oklahoma on that Red River Valley zone, I and mean, then maybe a smaller band of some ice as well on up into parts of northern Kansas. Now this system not bringing a long event of ice, but unlike some of our recent ice storms, the ice is going to be coming down or freezing rain, I should say, that's going to freeze on that contact. It's going to be coming down pretty hard and heavy, especially there. You can see that band there in parts of southern Missouri, northern Arkansas, as it looks right now. The model's coming into better agreement. That part's in northeast Oklahoma. Southwest Missouri and northern Arkansas could get some brief heavy ice. We'll also be monitoring the heavier rainfall there into our early Monday morning through parts of southeastern Texas. Um, and we're, uh, at that point, we're still monitoring atmospheric river like conditions there with um, snow in the Cascades and Sierras there in the west, heavy rain impacting that immediate coastline. Um, and then the system that we're watching over the plains at the same time going to continue to kind of head on off towards the north and east. Now let's get into the you know the more nitty gritty of that winter weather timing here with the European model. You can see as we go into our late Sunday, early Monday morning, we're going to have the eruption of maybe some light ice, some sleet trying to get going here over, again, southeast Kansas, parts of Oklahoma looking to be some of the initializing zones for this ice storm setup. But you can see here we go, as the sun begins to try and come on up into our Monday morning, it's looking like we'll have just a mix of some wintery precipitation. In this um, graphic that we're looking here from weathernerds.org, um, those purple colors actually indicating some of our freezing rain there. So you can see that really filling on in through northeast Oklahoma, northwest Arkansas as well as parts of um, Missouri. Even some snow on the northern end of this, and some of that could be locally heavy from Chicago on up in southwestern parts of Michigan there around the Lake Michigan zones. Of course, this is not a lake effect event as it looks right now. Um, this system going to continue. This is, again, mid-morning on Monday. By the early to mid-afternoon time frame, we continue to see the first piece of wave of energy with that system kind of push on off towards the north, breaking up with that snowfall. Doesn't look like we'll see much up there through the Chicago zone if we can get any early on, as I was just showing you. But the low pressure over Kansas that is going to continue to bring up that southerly push that will pretty much get rid of most of our freezing rain through parts of Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri. But what it does do is kind of create a little bit more of a warm front boundary out ahead of it from parts of eastern Nebraska all the way in over to places like Detroit, Michigan. It does look like early um, Tuesday morning here, so the 23rd, we will see some maybe some sleet and some snow erupt. I um, mean, it does look some, like some of that snow could be briefly heavy here through northeast Iowa, southern Wisconsin, even into parts of Michigan in as well. So we'll really have to see how this system evolves, but it does look like there will be at least a wintry side of this, And but of course the areas that start off with any sort of wintry precipitation, almost all of them with that warmer air pushing in from the south and west, pretty much turning straight
straight on over to a warmer or I should say cold rain I guess right um, at that point with temperatures in the 30s but that rain shift um, now let's look at the forecast ice accretion with the model blend here there will be higher totals in this in many areas but here in the Red River Valley um, in the parts of Dallas Plano there in Texas about around a tenth of an inch of ice maybe upwards of a 0.15 inches of ice accretion there on those surfaces and again this is going to cause slick roadways maybe a power outage risk as well but be careful driving here as we head into that Monday time frame here over parts of southeast Oklahoma, looking like some areas could locally pick up closer to a quarter of an inch. That does go for areas just west of Russellville there into parts of Arkansas as well, closer to Fort Smith, maybe a tenth to a quarter of an inch of that ice accretion. Um, and I guarantee you somewhere here into parts of southern Missouri as well, we'll probably have a tenth to a quarter of an inch in some zones. Even on over towards places like St. Louis, close to 0.05 to 0.15, kind of in that range for you there. Again, this model blend, of course, always on a little bit more of that conservative side. So expect the potential for locally higher totals and what this is showing. Central um, Illinois on up towards Chicago looking like a swath there of around 0.05 to 0.15 as well in that ice accretion category. Um, and as we shift our focus on up into southern Michigan, places like Detroit all the way back on over to Kalamazoo, a little bit in the way of lighter ice it looks like as of now, as this will mainly be more of a sleet and snow event. So here's your forecast snow through your Wednesday afternoon with the European model. Again, heavy snow back on over into the Mountain West, the Four Corners as well, but especially the the Cascades and Sierra is getting more than a foot of snow. Also notice that snow swath there that goes from northeast Iowa all the way on over through parts of central Michigan. Some spots this could be good for three to five inches of snowfall. And then this could kind of go in almost like a little bit of a, a upside down C shape there. You can kind of see that from Iowa and then curving on over and jumping on over into parts of parts of um, New York there as well as um, in the southern New England. Some spots there maybe two to four inches of some snow there. This will not be a big winter storm, but nonetheless a decent snow event into some of those spots. Now what we're also monitoring is the flood flood threat, okay, because we've got very heavy rainfall on the southern end of the system. Of course, it will cause flooding there in the California coastline as well, but we're also monitoring the system as it goes out over the plains. Again, this is that same one bringing the ice into the early week time frame, so this is as we go into our Monday morning. Looks like while there's some ice, of course, it doesn't show it as ice on this radar. This is composite reflectivity, but over parts of southeast Oklahoma, southwest Arkansas, southern Texas, really that Arklatex region, all these areas it's going to be coming down pretty hard with the rainfall. Some of that will head on up into the Midwest as well, but right behind that first band, we start to see a new southerly push erupt. Um, and you can see, again, there's that rain in the Midwest, but the new southerly push as it gets going there from the Gulf of Mexico going to bring a renewed chance for some rain as we head through Tuesday and into Wednesday of next week. And it really looks like it is going to be a very rainy pattern here um, from Oklahoma and Texas all the way on over through parts of the Mid-South and even into the Midwest. There's going to be that southerly push with a new low pressure system by the time we head into our Tuesday evening. Through Tuesday morning out of this first system, this is how much rain it could be good for. Yeah, you're seeing this correctly from parts of the Texas Gulf Coast through western Louisiana as well as into southwestern Arkansas. Those red colors indicating some areas, in fact, expected to get two to four inches of rain. Locally higher totals there just northwest of Houston could get closer to four to six. Someone likely to get half a foot through this time, so dangerous flooding concerns likely um, all the way up into parts of southern Missouri wouldn't rule out an inch or two of rainfall as well. And then here's how what uh, it, with with stacking on some additional totals there through our Thursday morning out of that next system, an additional two plus inches of rain totaling up, and then especially heading on off towards the east into parts of Mississippi, Alabama, and southern Tennessee. This is on top of what we had already had. Um, we, we, we add on another two to four inches, and that brings our grand total anywhere from around six to eight inches in some spots there um, into parts of Louisiana and Mississippi. So be very careful out on those roads. It does look like we will have that flooding concern, so turn around, don't drown if that does erupt. Um, but also notice back on into southern areas, Arizona will have a um, flood threat over the next few days and then back into parts of the Mountain West. That's really translate to there from parts of the Washington, Oregon, and California coastline. Then into our Arizona zones as we make our way into the day three time frame there with the flood threat. And then, of course, it continues there over the Mid-South. All right, here's your late January warm-up key points and information. Um, after several Arctic blasts, January is turning towards the warm side in a big way, with above-average temperatures taking over a big chunk of the country by Tuesday afternoon and strengthening from there. Ridging looking to get strongest up north, where temperatures will likely rise up to 20 degrees above normal for parts of the upper Midwest and Great Lakes, especially as the week comes to an end. This correlates with the Climate Prediction Center's bullseye on their 6-10 to 10 day temperature outlook. That outlook right there on the left side of your screen, it goes from January 
January 26th through the 30th. Um, and this is for some very noticeable warmth that will be very warm and muggy close to the Gulf Coast as temperatures surge well into the 60s and low 70s. I'm even seeing some 80s possible through parts of Central and South Florida and of course with more of those muggy dew points as well. Um, even the upper Midwest will see daytime highs well into the 30s and low 40s, which is a big improvement from negatives, right, like we've been seeing with those Arctic blasts. Um, so we could see a thaw, of course, for some many locations. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit subscribe. I don't upload all the time. Um, you see a bunch of channels uploading a bunch of videos every day. We don't do that here. We'll just get you all the information in one. Thanks for watching.